Yeah, we're going to pick up the, the two homework questions from the assignment. And we're going to dive right back right into the book and close out uh, into his body and move to uh, the next. The two homework questions were... You got a question, what you got? No, 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 no. I'm waiting for you to tell me. What? Okay. The homework should be baptism into the body. <laughs> and... Yes, baptism, <laughs> baptism, bat being baptized into Moses. Okay. Where, are, where are you we, we, we closed out Moses. We in the body, get ready to close out the body. However, there was two homework questions that I guess shook everybody up once I started dealing with how we were one with God, who was already in the body, in the family, one with God before we came into this world. Do y'all remember that? I, when I spoke of that, immediately you said Jeremiah. Yeah. I asked you to find it, oh, and no. you couldn't. <laughs> then I said, give me the account of John the Baptist and Zechariah, and no one could find it. So this is why you got to be some great Bible thumpers. <coughs> you got to know how to travel through that book. No cheat, no Google. No cheat, no Google. I'm not on Google. <laughs> <laughs> so, in saying that, how that we were already one with God before we got here. I'm going to re rehash this for you all so you'll know where we're going. How we're already in the body because we're talking about being baptized into his body. How we were already one with God before we came. We were hanging out with God. We were communing with God. And then God saw fit to bring us into this world through the avenue of a body. He gave us earthly parents. But once we came through that avenue with those earthly parents, we were tainted with sin. Because you can't be born into this world or into this life unless you're born into sin. So by you being born into sin, we said you have to grow up Get to that place of they call the age of understanding. Then you must be born again. Yeah. Everybody tracking. Everybody good. You must be born again. This is the very same thing that he spoke to Nicodemus at night. Nicodemus, a religious leader, religious ruler over the folks, was the cleanest man of his time did not understand what Jesus was saying when he said you must be born again. His mindset immediately went to the earthly birth. Can a man crawl back into the womb of his mother? This is his mindset. God said, or Jesus said, that which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. So when I tell you, you once were one with God before you came into this life and was tainted with sin, now you've all been born again. Now you must what? Renew your mind because your minds were at one time already new. So everybody on the same page now. Yeah. Wait, let's uh -oh, back up. Uh-oh, she said, hold up. <laughs> oh, let's back up. Wait a minute. That last phrase. Go okay. ahead, ask your question. I just need you to repeat what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to say all that one more time. Here's the thing. Just the last part from us being one with God before. Okay. We were one with God before we came into this earth. You are a spirit. You're still a spirit. Yes. You just have a, this earth suit of a body. That's the king David. But once you came through your parents and you were born, you were born into a world of sin. You were tainted now. You have a sin nature. And sin separates us from God. We have to understand sin separates us. So when you were born, sin, into this world of sin, sin was not part of you. You were no longer perfect. One time you were. But now sin is a part of you. Now you must be born again. Now 
your minds must be renewed. You have to renew your mind. And this is the thing, the very thing that Christ was teaching to Nicodemus. Gave you two homework assignments. Asked you to go ahead and look into the lifestyle of two people. One was being John the Baptist, how they were born, what was said, and the other was Jeremiah. So if you will, please, I know that none of you probably did your homework, did you? Uh, Size would probably be no. So let us all turn to the book of Luke. Let's take a trip with Luke and see what Luke has to say. Luke the physician has to say about the birth of this prominent forum. Let me know when we all get to Luke. We don't want to waste any time today. Not that we waste time because we sometimes just go down that rabbit trail and next thing you know, we don't got caught up in the spirit. And we have to descend before you know all the time has expired. Okay? Everybody ready? Everybody's in Luke? Luke chapter 1. I want someone to read, read verse 5 for me, please. Anyone, in the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a certain priest named Zacharias of the division of Aaron, and he had a wife from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth, and they were both righteous in the sight of God, walking blameless in all the commandments and requirements of the Lord. All and right. they, hold on, stop right there. Now, we're talking about the priest, okay? This is Zechariah. Uh, we spoke about all the priests and how they all had their time when they had to go through the temple and offer unto the Lord. There were so many that some folks never even made it into the temple within the cycle. So Zechariah was doing his time of his cycle in the temple, offering up unto the Lord. And let's see what happens while he's in there. Pick up at verse 7, will you please? And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. Okay, let's see. Now this is his course. His job was to do what? Burn, burn incense. That's all he had to do. His job was to burn incense through the course of his time in the temple. We see now that they had no children. They were very old. The wife was barren. Wasn't nothing living in there. She was dead. Couldn't, couldn't function. Nothing, couldn't make nothing. And here it is. During the course, let's see what happened. Pick up on verse 10. Zechariah named John. God named him. God sent the messenger and told him everything that he needed to convey to Zechariah. Zechariah is in the temple during his course. Keep this in mind. He's in the body. He's functioning. He's doing his course. He's burning his incense. But in the midst of him, in his course, burning his incense, what is Zachariah doing? Praying. He's praying. What is he praying for? That's not in the midst of him doing, in the body, functioning, doing what he's supposed to do, burning incense. He's having fun with the Lord, burning incense, but while he's burning the incense, he's praying. And in the midst of his praying, God sends an angel. 
to answer his prayer. Did he not? Is that not what he said? This is how you have to understand something. The angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias. Why? For thy prayer has been heard. When you're in place, in the body, and functioning, you can ask whatever you want. Your prayer will be heard. And here it is. He told him that your wife will bear a son. You're going to call his name John. And you're going to have joy and gladness. Isn't that awesome? The angel is coming to you, telling you, prophesying to you. you you're in the temple. You're doing what you're supposed to do. You're burning your incense. You're praying. You're like, Lord, could you imagine his prayers? I'm old, stricken. We don't have a summer. I have nothing to leave all this. Nothing went on to leave it too. Lord, I want a son. He hears it. The angel comes. He says, man, you're not only going to have a son, but you're going to call his name John. And you're going to have joy and gladness. And many shall rejoice at his birth. They're going to have a party. Are y'all picking this up? This is John the Baptist. For he shall be great. Now listen to what the Lord told the angel to tell him. The same thing the Lord told the angel to tell Zacharias, to speak to Zacharias concerning John, the Lord has said the same thing concerning you. Go ahead. Hey. He had the Holy Spirit before the disciples had it. I just want to point that out. Before <laughs> the weak disciples were like, why are y'all so weak? Listen. And one day went to the upper room, John had it at birth. He was in there, and the Holy Spirit was like, let me teach you what I want to teach you. I mean, that's, that's the difference. I mean, I mean, you see the power of the Holy Spirit. Kind of that, that, that reads well, but the Holy Spirit did not come until when? He said, if I don't leave, then he can't come. But it says, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Listen, he was fit. The Holy Spirit didn't come to dwell with man until Christ left. I got what you're saying. See, I, I want, that's why I did what I did in the beginning. Before you came here, you were where? With God. And who was up there? <laughs> and he said, let us. Who was he talking to? We had a board meeting. Who was he talking to? Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Right yeah. there. Yeah, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, right? Then he came down. Then we had to be born again. Then we had to renew our minds. Correct? This one here is a sent one. I need y'all to understand that. He's a sent one. He was already predestined in Isaiah and all these other prophets. Spoke of John. The forerunner. Remember? He's the forerunner. He was taught by the Lord. He was named by the Lord. He was prophesied over, not only by the prophets, but also by the Lord. Let's see it. John was on the And thou shalt have gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine, y'all catching this? Yeah. Nor strong drink, and shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. Where? While yet in his mother's womb. Even from his mother's womb. Everything that John needed was already placed inside him before he came. Yeah. Which means nothing he received nothing once he got here. Everything he needed he got before he got here. Yes. Everybody track. Now, many of the children of Israel shall be turned to the Lord because of John. 
Why? What was John doing? Preaching. Preaching. What was John's message? Repent. What was his what? What was the what? What was his number one? The what. The what was repent. repent. The why was There you go. Okay. But he had it. So he, yeah. He like, had the Holy Spirit. Everything John had, he had before he got here. Is that the reason why you said of all everything he, he had, had he had before he got here? Okay. Are you Most folks don't get the Holy Ghost until they are already here. I agree. But that means he had it. John was special. John had this. John was packaged. You gotta see this. John was packaged for this cause. He was sent for this cause. God didn't want anyone else being the forerunner for Christ except John. Now he sent John through the avenue of the lineage of Christ where they were cousins, but John got his assignment from God, not Zechariah. He had his assignment from God. He was sent for this purpose, just to be the forerunner, nothing else. And by him being the forerunner, if you look at what he said, no strong drink. Did y'all catch that? Mm -hmm. oh, no wine. No wine. Neither no wine, nor strong drink. What is that a part of? Huh? That is a part of the Nazarite vow. <laughs> that is a, that's a that was part of Samson's. That would make Samson a Nazarite. He was separated. Samson was a he was separated for yeah. that cause. They call it sanctification. No haircut, no strong drink, no wine, and you can't touch the unclean thing. Three Nazarite vows which separated you as a Nazarite. And we find it, the Nazarite vow, where? Speaking of John. You got to see this. Open the spiritual eyes, Lord. You got to see this. John was a Nazarite as well. From her. Oh boy, the Holy Spirit kicking in now, boy. Everything he needed, he had before he got it. All of his instructions he had before he got here. He was hanging out with God. God just told Zachariah, look, y'all old. You can't produce nothing. But I heard your prayers. And it's my desire to send the forerunner. Because the time is almost near. See, Elizabeth was six months pregnant before Mary. The Holy Spirit came upon Mary. He said, the time is here. The time is near and the time is almost now. So when the fullness of time come, I got to send my son. So, y'all want a baby. The forerunner has to come before he gets here. So the forerunner comes first. That's why he's called the forerunner, because he's not the runner. You ever seen NASCAR? Anybody watch NASCAR? Yeah. Sometimes they have two and three races on one team, but only one person can actually win, and the other two are just there to get the other folk out the way and prepare the track for the winner. How they slingshot each other and, and, and getting ahead and making a way so that guy can get up front. He's the forerunner. He made the way clear so that when he came through, everybody was prepared because his message was, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Christ's message was, what? Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Same thing. Your message is, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. They're like, well, yeah, we've been hearing that for over 2,000 years. Yeah, it's at hand. What's at hand? It's closer than you think. It's here. It's near, and it's almost now. 
I don't want to stay in this because we got we to move, man. Y'all just stop. I don't want to ask questions. That's all right. I want the questions, but we, we got to keep moving. And it says, he shall go before him in spirit and power of Elijah. Man, John was power packed. John was power packed. John had the Holy Spirit. He's the forerunner. God named him, and he said he'll have the same spirit and power as Elijah did. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for who? And he had to prepare them for Jesus. He had to prepare them. Zachariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this for? What did Zachariah do? He doubted God. What did he say? Because I'm old and my wife old too. How are you going to get a baby out of us? He tells this to the angel. How are you going to get a baby out of us, man? I'm old, she old. We can't make nothing. Let's see what God had to say. And the angel answered and said, I am Gabriel. Man, that was powerful right there by itself. The angel never disclosed who he was while he was delivering the message of the Lord. Because he was hoping that Zechariah would be operating in faith. But Zechariah, since you don't understand what's standing before you, the Lord sent me, and I'm telling you what's going to happen. I need to let you know who I am. Because everybody has heard of Gabriel and Michael. So he had to let him know, I am Gabriel. Did he not say that? I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God. Man, oh, I can, I can stop right there, y'all. Gabriel said, man, I'm standing in the presence of God. I'm listening to what God is saying. And I'm telling you what God said. And you don't believe me? Does that make sense? Gabriel, the messenger of the Lord, had to explain to Zechariah who he was and what his job is. I'm Gabriel, man. I stand in the presence of the Lord. The Lord told me to tell you this, but you don't believe me. It's powerful, isn't it? Then he said, and I am sent. What did he say? He was what? Sent. I was sent to tell you this, man. <laughs> I was sent to speak unto you and to show you these glad tidings. But since you don't believe, you're going to be done. Is that not what he said? When God sends the messenger to you, don't be dumb. Don't doubt. He said, I'm Gabriel, man. I stand before God. I was sent. Gabriel, I wouldn't be here if he didn't send me here. Here you have Zechariah talking to an angel. Everybody don't get to talk to an angel. Zechariah's in the temple, burning incense, praying, talking to an angel, and he's gotten so bold and beside himself that he's like, I'm old, she's old. We can't make nothing. And he said, man, maybe you don't understand who's standing before you. Let me explain. I'm Gabriel. I stand before God. In the presence of God. And he sent me here to tell you this. What he said is, Zechariah, I came and gave you good news. That's what he said, what glad tidings is. I came to bring you glad tidings. But you're not happy. You're not happy. You asked for a baby. You was praying for a son. God sent me to tell you he's going to give you one. But you're not happy. 
How many times y'all pray for something, ask God for something, and then He give it to you, but you ain't happy? Because it ain't enough. I, maybe I should have asked for two, or, or whatever the case may be. But you prayed for it, you asked for it, He gave it to you, and you're not even happy. It's like having a party and you're crying. This my part I cry for too. So Gabriel said, well, since you're not happy with what God has sent me to tell you, you're going to be done. You're going to be done. And not able to speak until the day everything is performed. Don't get yourself to a place to where you doubt God and God got to make you dumb. So you walk around. He walked around dumb. Couldn't talk. All he did was make noise. Mm, 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 mm. That's it. Every time he wanted something, he had to write it down. If he wanted to eat, he had to write it down. If he wanted somebody to fetch something here, bring something here to write it down. He was made dumb. How many people do you see walking around today that's dumb? Spiritually. We always want to think spiritual. They're just dumb because they don't believe what God is saying. So God's going to make them dumb until he bring everything that he said to pass. That's in this world today. There's a lot of folk running around dumb because they don't believe the word of the Lord. But God said, you're going to be dumb until I bring everything to pass. And when I do, then you're going to see the glory of the Lord. Awesome, man. Turn to Jeremiah. we got to get there real quick. Y'all don't got all caught up in, in John. See, that's why we can't talk about John. Turn to Jeremiah. Y'all don't believe y'all was hanging out with God before y'all got here? You still don't believe it? it. Y'all was hanging out with the Lord, man. If you could just take your mind back, man, I just want to remember when I was hanging out with you, Lord. It'd probably take you there. It'd probably show you. All you got to do is have a pure heart and just open yourself up to it. God will take you there. When, Jeremiah? Yes. Okay. Read uh, verse 1, sir, and I'll stop you with this time. Chapter 1? Chapter 1? Oh. Read verse 1, bro. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Pelopin, as a priest, who were in Anathon, in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Joshua, Josiah, the son of Amon, king of Judea, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judea, until the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judea, until the exile of Jerusalem in the fifth month. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. All right, stop right there. Now, we, we, we're going back to the reign of Josiah, Zedekiah, and all this back before the exile from, the, from all of God's people. God is reminding him of their relationship. Y'all understand that? See, I told you before the reason why Satan works so hard. It's not hard for him to destroy hookups because it's really not a real relationship. And people say, well, how can you say it ain't a real relationship? We go together. That's my boyfriend, my girl. You know, we go together. Go where? Where do y'all go? Y'all go shopping? I mean, where do you go? We go together. 